once again and uh, it has a format of a very uh, simple game. We will uh, throw a few keywords and uh, we would like to ask you to answer with the first association that, uh, that you have. Also taking into consideration what we talked about before. Would you like to start? All right. Let's start with you, Kasia. Money. <laughs> Career. Florian, recognition. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> Eva, innovation. No. Pressure. Uh, Brita, family. Kids. Juan, awards. Um, many. <laughs> Kasia, power. The crown. Florian, progression. Always. <laughs> Eva, optimism. It's good to have. <laughs> Fame. Glory. One, respect. Mm. Mom. Mm. Kasia, responsibility. Mom. <laughs> uh, Florian, uh, passion. Rose. Eva, dream. Peace and happiness. <laughs> Brita, hope. Uh, I pass it on. <laughs> One, hope. <laughs> Nightmares. Nightmares. Yeah. Let's move on to the next turning point. After visiting Beta House, we went directly to Coti Cafe. And we started also asking people about the notion of ambition. And among all the interviewees we encountered, we decided to rescue uh, an interview with a woman. Her name is Krista. And she managed also to bring a fully unexpected approach to the notion of ambition that we would like to share with you. It's also very short. We are three dimensions. So in, we are first of all spiritual, well body, mm -hmm. soul and brain. So each level has got its own ambition and the most important is, is um, a healthy brain, spirit and a healthy body and the most important ambition of our time is badly neglected and that's spiritual ambition. Never forget this. So of course you can have a professional ambition too and I think particularly in Western countries they uh, want to 
make money, to be successful in their professional life and show off. And as you get older, you find out it's not what it's important, most important. Our top priority, mine, is family first, family second, then somehow you must make a living, of course, and this is important so you can have some luxury. And I'm pleased to hear that you come from the arts, because that's the best you can have in life. So if you have a minimum a minimum wage, you have enough to eat, you have housing and a job, work, you will earn enough and maybe it's even interesting. And then the arts, that's the spirit, it keeps you up and if you have the spiritual dimension, then I mean, can you be happier in life? <laughs> I think it's extremely interesting that she speaks about three three main ambitions that we have. The ambition of the healthy body, the ambition of the mind, and the ambition of the spirit. And that these ambitions we should prioritize in, in our life. But I wonder when, when she kind of uh, talks about it, like how important is the spiritual side, the, the, the spirit, is that she really talk about ambition. And this is what I would like to a little bit tackle on what you, Diego, proposed, that uh, do we really still talk about ambition or maybe there are different driving forces that, uh, um, that uh, are responsible for our spiritual side or it's still ambition here. That, uh, and this is a different uh, definition of ambition in this way. Yeah, my understanding was like in, from this, I would call it esoteric angle that there is it's somehow like connected to star signs or something like that. There is like a situation you have and then there is a development towards somewhere. So it's some, some, some kind of abstraction of that. So it's not like such a focused ambition towards something specific. But um, nevertheless, there was a very clear ambition, happiness, um, which is where, where I must disagree. Or I think like happiness is like... Um, something utterly overrated, like, or at least for me personally, I think happiness is not really a goal um, for me. So I feel her <coughs> perspective is like, like um, it's kind of very vague and I find it difficult to apply it on this, like if, if we want to look into ambition in, in different ways, then it's like this. We all go somewhere and like, it seems to be the opposite of ambition, actually. Like it's like like a process that goes somewhere, and then you will see, and you make the best out of it somehow. Yeah, because yeah, I think that uh, still before when we were talking about ambition, or at mm. least uh, the material that we brought before, ambition was still connotated with the goal, this this point towards we aim to. And uh, here somehow, uh, if uh, Krista talks about the spiritual side, the spirit has its own ambition. Is it really about the goal that the this, this, this spiritual side goes to, or is it about just a journey or kind of uh, a peace with yourself, or and not necessarily thinking about goals, but about the journey itself? I think you can t can develop. A a certain awareness and attentiveness um, in life to notice things. And I even think there are systematic ways of doing it. Um, uh, and that, uh, I, I just don't know, as an example, like uh, when you come from the esoteric, like in yoga there's like this idea of, of the ashtanga, ashtanga, like the eighth... Uh, yeah. Huh? Limbs, yeah. Oh, um, and then uh, basically, so the first two are nama yama, niyama, so it's like the, the basic rules of your, how you treat yourself in society, and then, and then comes asana and pranayama. These are actually things you can practice, 
the like physical uh, movements and then breathing exercises, and then come a few more, and these are very difficult to practice. So then the, the next one is pratyaharas, where you actually draw back um, uh, the, the you draw back yourself inside, and then the other ones you can't practice anymore. But because you practice. The ones before they they have space to enter, and like this, I think also something like happiness or compassion, or um, have space to flourish. <laughs> but I'm 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 glad that you brought the word uh, practice, mm -hmm. uh, and practice is when actually the is there any chance that practice can be achieved? especially in this kind of uh, practices, yoga practices, is there any moment that you can say, okay, I got it, I have it? No. So uh, that means that <laughs> practice, the practice in this sense is not ambitious because it does not have this goal that it can be achieved? The, I mean, there's never a place where you reach the end or now you're perfect. It's, it's a constant way and, it, and it's a journey. It's a way of where you learn more about yourself and about others um, and it's, it's continuous. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. But nevertheless in practice there is also usually a certain wish to go further with it or to get better at it or to... I mean you could also say you're ambitious about acquiring knowledge and then there's never an end. I mean, mm. you will never know everything. So, but I would say nevertheless, um, you can practice these things, um, but I would claim still in practicing them, you try to get better. And, and there's no <coughs> kind of final point where you have achieved it, but I would say that's the same with most goals. Like, usually by the time we've achieved something, we realize that it wasn't really what we wanted, but that there's another thing to go for. But, but so. you agree with me, Britta, that when, f for example, d to use this example of uh, uh, mm, gaining knowledge, mm -hmm. practicing that, uh, there could be different angles. The fact that in a certain moment I, I'm doing a rain check, oh, I know actually more. Or this kind of way of learning is already for me something that gives me pleasure. So it's somehow it points out some, somewhere else for the journey itself or this kind of steps, this kind of achievements. Now I know this, now I know this, now I don't know this. I mean, I think, yeah, I, I, don't know. I think with the achievements, it's anyway, you never know when they come. You know, like sometimes you practice something for three years and then finally after three years you realize, oh, actually now this is easier or now I've discovered a new part of it. Um, I don't know, maybe there are practices where, where the doing of it is all that it is about. Um, I don't know, does, does that help us further? <laughs> <coughs> like living? <laughs> Usually the, the actual practice of being an artist uh, is brought as an example of something that some people will do anyway, regardless of what are the outcomes or results or, for instance, the um, positive outcomes uh, out of a career. Would you say that would you actually continue being an artist regardless of uh, getting any form of uh, reward in, in doing it? Would you continue doing art? I mean, outside, reward, so recognition. Exactly, like... A, with no recognition, with no visibility, with no... Awards many. <laughs> Would you still do what you do in terms of art practice? No, it would probably change. I don't know. Like the, the art practice, but I... Um, and I don't know, maybe there comes a point when you start like... Um, that it's not interesting any longer for you, or not fulfilling, or not what you're doing. But um, I think this um, moment of, or, or this dynamic notion of recognition is, is a very difficult one and it, it, it annoys me when I hear something like, like what the, the Christoph Knoch is saying and it's like um, 
that's actually like, like, then it becomes a commodity. I mean, this is the speech of Berlin, I'm aber sexy. This is like, I mean, it's, it's, it's a sales point that um, he goes into and then a little bit of puppet playing that it might become um, something like a cultural asset. But if we are talking about cultural assets, we are not talking about art. And now, next decision, like, is art anyways corrupted because it is part of all that, or do we want to defend art as something that um, keeps, keeps moving? Anya, uh, uh, um, Kasia is uh, laughing, so <laughs> I think... Um, I don't know, like, I would, I would definitely drop it if at some point I wouldn't feel I'm rewarded for what I'm doing. Because I think for me, and I, I assume that for most of us, it would be impossible because like, our work is also based, that's how I see it at least, it's based on this also necessity for being accepted with what you do because you're going to be watched, you're going to be received. And it's a very really vulnerable position, so whatever you propose to the world, if the world doesn't respond to it, I guess you also have to be delusional to keep doing it and claiming that you exist with your work within community. And but of course the reward is small. When I was like twenty it was like enough for me to have like a few hundred slaughters and do my piece and my parents are coming and and I was you know, nobody ever told me that I can't do it. And I think this is also enough, like people say that I I can do things, and also it keeps you, because you, you're like based, you're emotionally dependent on the community. And also what I mean by that is like dance community, performance community, people that are like mostly your audience and your colleagues. Because we also have this like merging of like what is actually my private, and where is the work, how do I relate to people within the community, and then I think we're like trapped, we have to develop the ways also to offer each other maybe a better speech, you know, like to change the language that we would like approach each other with, like, and maybe then we, we, we don't need to not, like any longer see it as a reward, but more like you're acknowledged as somebody contributing to the community, yeah. and it's not, and you don't have to be prioritized, but you can still do your job because you care. Uh, yes, I agree with Kasha, but I also think having been, having had the experience of, like when you actually put out a performance, uh, you're, you're quite vulnerable because people can really criticize you. And uh, if, if you're not such so thick skinned, you can be very affected by it. Um, and I think my ambition. <laughs> Is also in, was in the past years and also for the future when I when I now do work on projects. There's one part of me that of course wants to be recognized, but another part of me that I think that one's even more important is uh, that I do want this project to be meaningful to myself, um, and then it doesn't actually matter what people will say after. Mm -hmm. It, but it's a combination. It's not that I don't care what people think, but it's also that I just want to make sure, step by step, as I move along, that there's a thing where where it's where I care and where it's meaningful. To